Hey guys, Ben Bellack and at Zach Goldsmith 24 here with another episode of To Live and Buy in Los Angeles. While we have a variety of guests on this show, including but notwithstanding titans of our industry, golf pros, writers, directors, shit. We had the director of Dukes of Hazard on this show already. It's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, it was in the 80s, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's still not big. to show the movie, Dum Dum. We, of course, are your local Beverly Hills area real estate experts. And being that we've reached the halfway point of the year, we thought it appropriate to give you not only a quick national housing market snapshot, but also a local Los Angeles look. So much has happened this year already with 2022 being a once in a lifetime market, along with ULA and this new wildlife ordinance wreaking havoc on not only sales, but forecasting. As of mid 2023, the housing market is still having a clear and widespread impact on the nation's economy. Big time. Mortgage rates have remained high throughout the first half of the year and at nearly seven percent now seven percent rates hit a peak for 2023 this last week in july these inflated rates have turned some potential buyers away from the housing market but a lack of for sale inventory is still keeping demand high in many markets in addition issues with inflation inflated home prices as well as the ongoing fallout from the regional bank collapses that occurred early this year are further contributing to the unpredictable landscape oh this sounds awful i think it's interesting because it gives us a chance to be the knowledge brokers and i i really do enjoy giving an opinion sometimes we're right sometimes we're right minus uh, we're often not wrong because we're in the trenches, but I do love a market like this because it gives us a chance to turn to our clients and go, hey, this is what I'm seeing. seeing. This is what we're feeling uh, personally and as an organization. Listen, and, it, it gives you a chance to talk and give an opinion, whether welcomed or not. We're in sales. I don't give unwelcomed. <laughs> Try golfing with you. Well, dude, you've been doing the same thing for two years and you keep going, I don't understand. And I'm I can't not find hinging my ball. anymore. I'm not hinging anymore. Anyway, look. <laughs> the nation's housing industry, I think we can agree, has entered a new normal mm -hmm. in which the dynamics of this market are perplexing, to that say is the least. The, the market, market update host live from CNBC. Am I hosty? I'm just trying to talk normally. I just you know, get excited about okay, a market update. Okay, I apologize. Okay, it's marked by what? Higher mortgage rates, uh, high home prices, mm -hmm. along with shrinking mortgage originations. Yeah, they went back down last month. I'm, I'm sorry, last week. Okay. I mean, these are not good signs for this market, but you know, we'll come out of it. Look, mm -hmm. the perplexing part is that why i think everyone wants to know why are home prices not declining in this environment mm -hmm. i think it's simple it boils down to two factors we talk a lot about this according to our housing industry experts not just us others we confer with okay. we're experts though for sure a lack of inventory yep. right a lack mm -hmm. of supply that is keeping prices high and a high demand for that limited stock, mm -hmm. right? Uh, which is also fueling a jump in new home sales, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so this is a trend that has prevailed throughout the first half of this year mm -hmm. um, without any significant uptick in for sale inventory mm -hmm. or another massive shift in the market. This is likely to continue ad nauseum. Yeah. I mean, housing inventory finally broke under 2022 levels last week. So to give you an idea of how different this, is, this year is from last year, is that last week in 2022, active listings grew about 31,000. While this year, they only grew 5,800. Wow. <laughs> Not that I didn't read this at a time, this, this article, but... It is mind blowing to hear that. I know. So mortgage rates rose again yeah. uh, after the better than anticipated jobless claims data. But even with higher rates, we also had a third week of positive purchase application data, which again shrank at the, the end of last week. So the inventory bottom for 2022 was 240,194 houses. The inventory peak 
for 2023 so far is 472,688 homes. Okay, so for context, active listings for the week in 2015 were 1,183,000. Right. Okay. Seeing negative year over year inventory before July 4th would be a big deal if last year wasn't so crazy. Mm -hmm. However, I need to put some context into what happened in 2022. Okay. In March of 2022, we had the lowest inventory levels ever recorded in history. Then, or since the shot clock was enacted, then in a short amount of time, we had the biggest and fastest mortgage rate spike in history, which facilitated the biggest one year crash in home sales history. Volume, sales volume. Sales volume, yeah. which helped inventory grow faster than normal in 2022. Okay. So the fact that housing demand stabilize and inventory is now negative year over year needs the context that 2022 was a once in a lifetime event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other big story with housing inventory is that new listing data has been trending negative year over year since the end of June of 2022. By the way, in June of 2022, it began three 75 basis point raises. Um, which is why Q3 and Q4 were so terrible. There were three consecutive 75 point basis rates. So three quarters of a point. Um, we had new listing growths from 2021 to 2022, but that's not the case this year. And this is another variable contributing to slow inventory growth, which has now turned negative in the weekly listing. So if we compare the new listings data last week, to the same week in recent years. In 2023, 62,000. In 2022, 91,000. In 2021, 80,000. That's a huge drop this year. So inventory huh. remains scarce. Yeah. Well, I think the one thing that has changed in 2023 is that since the banking crisis, the spreads between the 10 year and mortgage rates have worsened. OK, this this is making mortgage rates higher. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen anything in the data showing that it's been improving recently. Have you? No, no. Uh, and this is a big deal as we've seen housing inventory not get much traction with higher rates. And hopefully in the future, lower rates can entice um, sellers to move for right now when they're locked into two and three percent interest rates. We're not going to sell. Do you agree? I'm not selling. No. Also important to note, the purchase application data has surprised people with three weeks in a row of growth, while mortgage rates have been near 7% during this period, another record high over the last 10 years. This now makes the positive count since November 9th, 2022, 20 positive prints versus 11 negative prints. Okay. The year to date numbers are 13 positive versus 11 negative after making some holiday adjustments to the data line. Now, what do these numbers mean? They just mean that housing data has stabilized. Nothing in the data shows decent growth after the first good move from November to February. However, the fact that housing demand has stabilized is a pretty big deal because last year we did have a waterfall collapse in the data from the end of last year. Okay, so let's let's turn to LA local for a second, okay? In the markets that you and I service. Yeah, that's national news just to cover. Uh -huh. Let's go local. Okay, so in the markets you and I service, call it Los Feliz de Malibu, you can see a pretty consistent trend line on our local MLS if you look at a tool called the Neighborhood Snapshot. The amount of inventory grew slowly and steadily into March, mostly. Obviously, there's a few exceptions, but mostly inventory grew. Um, and then all of a sudden, it seemed to sharply decline everywhere. And I think that's a result of the interest rates. So while high interest rates slow down the buyer pool, people forget that they're certainly not enticing sellers either. So believe it or not, locally and nationally, no matter what our buyers come to us telling us, if you look at the stats, we are still very much in a seller's market. So I think that 
Why don't we turn to our experience in the trenches just briefly here? Zach, you have a listing on Trenton in the flats of Beverly Hills. It's in the Western Flats, which is arguably one of, if not the best locations in the real estate universe as we know it. It's not a fulfilling dollars. Relatively speaking, it's around eight, right? Eight and a half, yeah. Okay. And you've had a few escrows on this property? Yeah. I mean, this is interesting. We've had usually places in Beverly Hills will fly off the shelves if they're priced right, because the demand there is higher than ever, I'd say. And it's only 40 blocks east, west and what? Five blocks north. South. Yeah. From Santa Monica to sunset. Yeah. Um, we had two escrows inspections inspected well not the problem the problem one time is a typical retrade which mm. um to give you an idea of what that means is someone will come in inspect the property we're in escrow at eight four they come in they come back and say we'll, we'll buy it for seven eight and this is after two and a half weeks of dragging us along mm -hmm. <clears throat> and eventually we're just like there's no justification to this. There's mm -hmm. maybe sixty thousand dollars worth of repairs, which we're happy to contribute to, but this is totally out of uh, out of out of the blue and has nothing to do with anything. So, is this what's number? What about the second? Well, escrow? well, but is that is that a product of the environment that we're in? Is the question? I think is the it, retraders think the sellers are a little bit more desperate, so they're a little bit more likely to try, or they're willing to make the gap between offer price and the retrade request wider. Well, I'll tell you when this wasn't happening a year ago that you didn't have anyone attempting mm -hmm. to retrade a year ago because you couldn't because you had four backups behind That's you right. or something like this. Yeah. So what we're priced aggressively, but within the ballpark. Yeah. And I think there's great value add to this property. Convincing someone of that, a buyer right now, is like, look, I have to pay 7% versus 3% a year ago. I want a big discount on the price. So we booted them. The next guy got in, one of our agents here, and um, didn't even get to inspections, had problems with his financing. Okay. So that's another issue, is we're seeing financing issues right mm -hmm. now. So we're seeing a little bit of a struggle selling this property. Last year, this would have been gone. This year... We're seeing people want to retrade and we're seeing people having financing. Yeah, or, or, or they're just like on ice or they think like the market suffering so that that inspection period is like really critical, I think, to keep it moving quickly. Um, the or and the listing agents to to, you know, tell buyers, agents up front, this seller is a stickler for punctuality. So we're going to expect a contingency removal on time. Just want to give you that heads up. So there isn't like a drag along um, because the seller has a risk on those. A buyer maybe had risks a few dollars and, and time, but time is the seller's risk. You also have a listing on solar in Nichols Canyon, which is very much in the first time slash a uh, new couple price range. You and I both, when you showed it to me as a pocket, potentially for me, thought it was going to fly off the shelf. And um, it's in a price range. It's still very hot. At least we thought in LA is your experience with solar, which by the way, guys has an incredible view and plenty of square footage and a pool. Do you, does that change your opinion of where the market is today? Yes or no, based on your experience with solar? Yes or no? Simple answer is yes. Wow. This this property was listed at three and a half. So just, just over the three million dollar threshold, which I think a lot of people will. Uh, there's a lot more buyers for just under three than just over three. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? If you can believe the difference is, you know, that delta is not that big, but qualifying makes a big difference. So we actually did have offers right out of the gate. And because it is, it does have sensational views. It is on a flat cul-de-sac. There's a lot of factors going for it. Beautiful um, renovation at architecture. So I thought we'd sell it right away, even though we're sort of higher uh, price per square foot than others. We didn't get the price they wanted, so they wouldn't sell it. Um, now going back, it's like your first offer, maybe your best offer. We pulled it off the market. We did some changes and uh, came back on the market a lower price. And now we are in escrow, have removed all contingencies, but at a lower price than two of the offers we started with four months ago. So sellers, heed your warning. And I do want to say, 
Zach is one of the few agents in town that has my respect in a category that I don't give much respect in, which is his approach to marketing. Um, he definitely like aims to emotionally captivate buyers at first contact. Um, it's something that I have felt like has been my one of my defining niches since I've been in it and, and one with a, an agent that we just had on that you guys are going to see soon. And I, I think that the fact that even with the marketing firepower that he deployed, there's still we still are in a price driven sector. So speaking of that price improvement, I have a listing in um, Santa Monica and um, it was listed on the high end for a while. I took it because I had sold the most expensive house nearby in this this nook of Santa Monica. And um, the guy was very, very tough on price. He didn't take my advice. And then like six months later, he was ready to make like a very serious move, which would have been a $500,000 price improvement. And he said to me, he goes, if I want to take it to 4 million where you think it's worth, how do we architect it? I said, in this market, you price it at 4 million. If you don't get it, you'd lease it. If you do, maybe this is your best chance at multiple. So after zero offers in six months at four or five, which is right? Not that far of four. How many sellers have you have told you some version of if the buyers think it's worth four, let them write it. And you're like, it doesn't work that way for these reasons. But what I told him specifically was two things. One, I believe that in this market, that being priced appropriately is not enough. The buyers need to feel like they're getting some semblance of a value or some version of a deal. Also, you have to be very, very cognizant of who your buyer is and what their price range is. I believe that when we were four or five, our buyers weren't even seeing us. Because we had sexy collateral, buyers were coming out, but compared to their cohort at four or five, which is you're always talking about like really knowing the market, the market that we were fitting in, we just were not sexy enough. So once we got down to 3995, our buyers saw us and within three days we we're in multiple offers and full contingency removal. Wow. So you did get multiple. And so we went ask- above four million. Wow. So like sometimes, as I've told sellers in listing appointments, sometimes it's easier to go up than to start up. And I think in this market, you end up chasing the market down. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that in this market, so, so back to kind of just as we wrap up here, I think, and you can, you give me your opinion too. I actually feel that prices are now going down because this interest rate thing has taken so many buyers out of the market. So many buyers that were able to try and get cute with single tax return or bank statement loans and the banks have gotten out of the business. They've made it tougher to get these loans that are on the margins of, meaning the outer margins of Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, where they won't buy the loans in the secondary market. I think that at this point, because interest rates have taken buyers out of the market for so long and the lenders have really gotten out of the business of lending as we see these yield curves that represent um, the spread of interest rates across different products and these pro- these in the the underwriting standards as like they really don't want to loan money they made plenty of money in the last 2 years so many people are now out of the market and just because we have lower inventory we're still an expensive city and i think we're finally starting to see prices go down the depth of that i don't think is going to be deep but i do think we are starting to see prices go down so back to what you were saying earlier and then i'll kick it to you to wrap us up is like I think buyers have to do the math. They got to go, okay, at 7%, this house has been on the market for 180 days. If I can get a $400,000 discount or whatever the relative discount is to you in your neighborhood, maybe this makes sense to take an IO loan and just have this for four years. But you do have to be careful. When your agent says, marry the house, date the rate, I don't believe, and this is me only, that there's going to be a material change in interest rates by this time next year. So don't just think you're going to refine 12 months. You got to be prepared for that long haul, that expensive interest rate. You got to be prepared because it's likely not going to be worth the cost of the refi. Um, Zach, what do you think in the trenches here? Well, I think there's no question. You don't have to think it. The numbers are showing that inventory is cut and prices are also cut. 
also cut, yeah. not at rates that buyers want necessarily, but which they are going to have to accept. Because if you take time and you say, I'm not going to get in the market now, I'll wait till interest rates drop at the end of the year if they do, which we expect maybe one or two drops by the end of the year, then what happens? Then there's another frenzy in the market for people to jump in. And now you've lost out on that opportunity. So I, if I am a buyer, which I always am, I am going to go hard on properties that I see sitting on the market mm -hmm. that I want to uh, make an aggressive offer on. Not unrealistic because I think people get too unrealistic and go for 500000 say, off the list price. And then you're just shooting yourself in the foot. It's never going to happen. Try for three hundred because what's the difference over you have that property for five, what, seven, ten years? What's the price range you're talking about right now? Well, let's say a four million, five million dollar. Yo, price check for this it. out. We put in an offer that's on a house that's five five last week, and we got them down to four eight. Yeah, I mean, and that's a win. I mean, look, by the way, I don't it's been know, on for a while. I don't know how. I, I mean, I don't know the property you're talking about. It just depends on you if it's. It. it seems like oh, that sounds like a great deal, but they could have been asking five five for a three two house. So it, it's all relative. Well said. But if you are, if you can, We're still overpaying. If you, <laughs> I don't. Know, if you can pick something up, and you feel like you're getting a good price relative to the time we're in, you're going to be in that property for a while. This is not a flip market. Unless you get something incredible with with awesome value add, which there still are properties like that out there, you got to be prepared for the long haul, and then you're making a smart investment. I think I, you know what, you just made me think. I feel like if you can pick up a light fixer, like for example, whatever the price, wherever it may land, like my tiger tail, for example, great view, great hood good square footage, light fixer that's been on for a while, I feel like those are really good to target because you do get an ability to add value, which I know you always recommend. Try to find something where you can either add square footage or sexify it in a way where you know people are going to love it when you go to sell it. Well, 100%. It may not be for you. You may not have the time or the bandwidth, and you just want something that's done, and you'll take the appreciation, which is also fine. For me, I like adding value to a place. I think it's also important to note, as you are a seller and being realistic in this market, um, and I think you'll still get high dollar amounts because inventory is so low that you've got, you know, high demand, not a lot of product out there. You're in the driver's seat, like you said, seller's market. However, as a seller, if you want to be smart and realistic, I think it's very important. Your agent should be doing this. You also should be seeing what else is out there in your price point that buyers will be looking at. Mm -hmm. Because if Agreed. you think my baby is the best in the, you know, obviously everyone thinks that. The but bell you, of the ball, as Josh Myler calls it. The bell of the ball. But I never just look when I'm pricing something at what has sold. You also have got to look at what else is available. What else will they be looking at? And once you establish that, fine, you can have a markup because you're th you, you think yours is better in certain ways. And it may be. That's give and take. But you've got to see what else is out there that people are going yeah, for. You that should put sellers in a more realistic position. Let me let me ask you a question what really quick. So you've been in the business now almost 20 years? Yeah. Definitely over 15. Yeah. Have you ever experienced a time in the market where you had so much trouble predicting where it was going and forecasting? Do you, rem yes. do you remember yes, a time? Yes, I do. Um, Every year. Oh, stop. Because as m well, it's true. As much as people think this is lining up, you never know what's going to happen in the rest of the world. There could be war. There could be uh, unemployment. I mean, the, the, the job rates and the unemployment rates make a huge difference okay, in what Larry happens David, in the market. It was pretty easy, I think, to predict uh, the uh, the few runs that we were having. Just if we look, look at if you're the big and short demand. and you and you and you realized <laughs> in 05 and 06 what was going to happen, you made a shitload of money, but not everyone else did. No, I know. I just feel like it's weird because we have very low inventory and now it's starting to feel like even though we've got more demand than supply, relatively speaking, I feel like we've got a large cohort of the buyers that are just throwing their hands up in the air and they're like, fuck this. But wouldn't you have thought that rates jumping from 2.875 to 7 would have flattened the market, would have totally tanked the market? 
people thought it was going to, and it didn't. Well, here's what I feel like is happening right now. I feel like what happened was you had a large group of buyers that were taken out of the market, right? Because like, let's say someone could afford a $2 million house, right? And then interest rates take them down to one five. Impossible to make that change psychologically, right? Okay. But then you had this final group of buyers, which I find myself in, that didn't need to buy, doesn't have a life change repelling it, just wants to, right? And is hopeful that because I've endured not only time, and the market, and also these interest rates, I've waited, I now want to benefit from that. And what I'm seeing is, is that prices haven't really moved, not yet, they are a little, and interest rates have not improved. I'm just like tapping out. So I feel like when you have people that now can't afford the house they need, and then the marginal people who don't need to, but would like to out of it, that's when I think we start to see prices go down regardless of inventory. Maybe I'm crazy. I mean, look, all but we I've can do is houses. all we can do is make uh, predictions based on the analytics that we have and the trends that we've seen. Yeah, it's and just then, the trenches feel. That's I, my. I've been in the business feel. since 2005, and in 2005 and 2006, wow, 2007, was it was wild. I was eight years old then. You are not, and it and it was <laughs> it was wild what was happening in the market, and the the growth was out of control, and then the market completely tanked because of the shortage of the shorting of mortgage rates. Could people see that coming? Some did, and some made a lot of money. Others, no idea it was going to happen. I mean, people had to have known all these ridiculous loans they were giving out that were huge balloon payments, like couldn't last forever. But okay. Well, that was Bill Clinton's uh, every American should own a house dream. Sure, sure. Oh, wait. Uh, But wait, I want to ask you as we wrap up. By the way, I love interviewing you. Okay. I just, by the way, but you, but you asked a great question and you didn't like the answer, but that is a serious answer from one year to the next. You, you go based on the stats, analytics and the trends, but I just said, you're just making forecasts. I just said, uh, is it harder to forecast? Let me ask you this. This is the final question, unless you have others, but my question for you, final answer. my final question for you is what do you think our Q3 outlook is going to look like? Uh, I, Again, based on these analytics, I think we're still going to have low inventory, we're mm-hmm. still going to have high interest rates, and we're still going to have high demand. So I think we're going to see a $5 million so asking like stag- price sell for 4650 Yeah, so stagflation. Four, seven. Yes, I think we're going to see slight decreases. It's not going to be slashes, and I think that'll continue into Q4. Okay, there you have it. It took us a while, but we got our trenches take. I am at Ben Bellack on the Grizzam. Wait. No one else is Ben Belak. Am I at B Belak? No, no. I'm at Ben Belak, seated next to Zach Goldsmith24. And this has been another episode of To Live and Buy in Los Angeles. Muchas gracias. Super bien. <laughs> Good luck out there, guys.